What's going on guys? Welcome back to Life by the Bow. If you guys aren't already subscribed, I definitely suggest doing so. I can promise you, you guys will not be disappointed. But anyway, we're here in the beautiful Florida Keys and this is my backyard. Today we're gonna be going out in the bay boat and we're gonna try to put something together. We don't really know what we're gonna catch. We don't really know what we're gonna do. But one thing I know for sure is it's a little cold right now. Um, cold for us Floridians, it's about 65 degrees, but we're gonna hop in the boat, we're gonna get going. Hopefully we can catch something. All right, guys, so we have just arrived at our first stop of the day. And this time of year, I really like to get in the water and kind of just check out everything that's going on down there. Mostly because a lot of the bigger fish come in and they get up on these shallow patch reefs here. Plus, this water is just crystal clear. So it is just so beautiful to get in, kind of swim around and just see what's going on but I'm going to hop in with a little bit of a twist and I'm going to be bringing down what's called a yo-yo. And basically what it is, it's a spool um, that you just wrap fishing line around. Just in case we see like a hogfish or a grouper or something down there. And it's just always fun to just do something a little different, catch a fish with our hands versus on a rod and reel. So hopefully when we get down there, we can see some cool stuff and maybe pull on a fish or two. Go. Oh, that's cold, baby. the hook right next to the boat but I was on a hogfish and he went straight into the hole and then as soon as I dropped the crab down for the hogfish this grouper just comes out of nowhere it just nails the blue crab I don't care that I lost it because grouper are out of season but that's just a perfect example based on how when you catch a grouper they just go straight into the rock I was not expecting that at all so I'm not gonna lie that water is pretty dang cold for a Floridian. I don't do well with the cold whatsoever, but it was definitely really cool getting down there. We fed a couple hogfish. We're hoping to get one big enough to keep. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little run north. We're just gonna see if we can make something happen. Always nice when you can show up to a new spot and you got a good fish on. It's almost feeling like a an amberjack or something. <clears throat> That's what's so cool about taking out the bay boat is, you know, the contender. It's nice. It's comfortable. I'm not gonna lie, Nick and I wish we were in it right now. <laughs> but at the end of the day. 
you get to try and fish so many different spots when you're in a smaller boat because your fuel range is just so much better. We've just been spending all morning just hopping around from different spots trying different things. And this boat gives us the ability to do so and it's awesome. I mean, there's pros and cons to both. I love both boats, but you know, if it's calm enough to come out with the Pathfinder, I always love doing so. It's so much easier and it's just so much more practical. What do we got? What do we got? Million dollar question. What do we got? That is a massive white Margate. Check that out. That thing is huge. Woo. So that right there is what's called a white Margate. These are actually delicious to eat. These are very comparable to Snapper. And this one is just massive. So we're gonna throw him in the box. And that's our first caught fish in the boat today, baby. Nice. Oh, we got a double. That one's on too. <laughs> I wonder what we have. We're out here just doing slow trolling. Basically what we're doing is we just have the trolling motor on a north heading. So rather than trolling with the combustion motor, we're just trolling with a trolling motor. It's so easy and cool too because I just control it all off this remote. Yeah, these are dead. We're definitely doubled up on some tunas or bonitas. Yeah, it looks like a bonita. That's cool. So that right there is a bonita. These actually make great bait. Cut them up into little cubes. But I'm gonna tend to the other one because sometimes tuna and bonita swim together. So I'm hoping when reeling in that other one, maybe, just maybe, it might be a tuna. Hopefully we got a good fish here. Come on. Here we go. Regardless if we catch them or not, it's always fun pulling on any type of fish that's in the tuna family, just because they fight so hard and they're always pulling drag. Sweet. So as mentioned, that's a bonita right there. They're in the same family as tuna. Don't get them mistaken. You can always tell the difference from all their markings here on the side. But what's so cool about this fish and the same exact thing with the blackfin tuna, check out their rudders on the tail right there. You'll see them move back and forth. Pretty insane, huh? But like I was saying, I mean, these aren't really too good to eat. Sure, you could eat them if you really wanted to, but we're gonna throw him back. Save him for another day. So Nick and I are out here fishing and as you can see there's this boat right here in the background. I'm not going to say how I feel about it but I'm just curious. I want to know what everybody thinks. If you're fishing a spot in the ocean and there's nobody else around and a boat comes up on you, write down in the comments. Let me see what everybody else thinks because I want to be fair but at the same time I understand the ocean. You know, it can be a very big place, but at the same time, it can be a very small place. Oh, please be a blackfin tuna. Is that a blackfin tuna? We got sushi, baby! God, it has been such a long time since I've caught a blackfin tuna. Wow! Those of you that don't know, that is a blackfin tuna. Believe it or not, this is actually... It's on the smaller side, but these actually don't get too big. This is, you know, what you would typically keep if you were to catch a blackfin tuna. And especially the small ones, they make absolutely amazing sushi. I was not expecting that. Sweet! Tuna in the box, baby. Well, 
there it is guys that is the catch of the day not the biggest fish that we caught today but i can promise you this one is going to taste the best this is a sushi grade fish so you can actually eat it raw and it tastes absolutely delicious what i'm going to try to do is convince stephanie to do a tuna tartar dish it's basically like a dip and if you look at this little tiny one these are the best tasting tuna if you notice how nice that meat looks that's the bloodline right there so as you can see that meat is nice and transparent the little ones always taste so much better than the big ones So I'm actually going to be doing a recipe that I just kind of created. It's kind of like a pokey, but... I call it tuna tartar. I feel like it's more like tuna um, tartar. Yeah, I mean... Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So anyways, so my shout out to my brother's girlfriend, Amber, loves this. Every time she's come over, I've done this for her and my family, and they absolutely love it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for you guys. So all I'm gonna use is sriracha sauce, some sesame seeds, sesame oil, soy sauce, a lime, and then you need your green onions and some tortilla chips to go with it. So let's get to it. start mixing all these ingredients together and since it's not a recipe I'm following I just kind of taste test as I go so I add a little something and then I add another little something and then I add another little something and then I see how it all tastes together <laughs> so I'm gonna start with my sriracha I like a lot of sriracha then I've got some soy sauce there then just gonna add a tad of bit of sesame oil just to give it that flavor. And then of course my green onions. And then I'm gonna add some lime. Then I'm gonna add some sesame seeds. I just put enough sesame seeds to cover the tuna in the bowl and then mix it all in. And voila! We've got our dip. Mmm, pretty good. Mmm. That's addicting. Mmm. Honestly, probably one of my most favorite dishes that you make. Just in case you guys were maybe wondering why the heck is this guy freaking out about catching a little tiny tuna, this is why. We're at a time of year right now where, at least for me, Catching tuna gets kind of difficult. Really catching fish in general gets difficult because, you know, we went out there today, there just really wasn't much current. Typically when you have good current, you have good fishing, and um, it was so slow. So this right here is why I was so happy. This is why I'm so excited. It does not get any better than that. Fresh sushi out of our backyard. Yeah, and I'm also grateful for it too because this calls for a great appetizer mm -hmm. and um, it's easy to make. So if you're ever entertaining guests or you have family over, yeah. you can whip this up fairly quickly. It took us, what, about five minutes? Five minutes. Yeah. And our family absolutely loves it. Like, mm -hmm. you fill a big bowl from what we're, or I guess, what is it, like the mixing bowl or whatever you want to call yeah, it? Yeah, a mixing bowl. We'll fill that all the way to the top with tuna. By the time everybody leaves, completely gone. Yes. None of it left. So I gave you guys a great recipe because mm -hmm. our family loves it. And um, I want you guys to try this. Go out, catch yourself a little tuna, mm -hmm. or try to catch a big one. But if you catch <laughs> a little one, this calls for a great appetizer. So it hope sure you does. guys enjoyed this video. Uh, drop a comment, let us know what you think. Give us ideas of what we should start fishing for. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you guys next time. See you guys. Bye.